Hi, ladies and gentlemen, it's Dr. Julian Avoa. I received some questions and I wanted to talk about uh, teen pregnancy. And since I run a teen clinic, I thought it would be a good idea to go over some general terms and some general misconceptions and try to clarify them. Now, I'm only speaking in terms since I'm a doctor rather than a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, so I'm going to address the questions and comments based on my medical knowledge, not as a legal uh, you know, uh, information or legal advice. So just keep that in mind. If you want some more in-depth understanding of the law, I suggest you, you contact a lawyer. But just to clarify some points, there were six points I think I wanted to go over, so hopefully I'll do it rather quickly. Number one, the distinction between emancipation and consent. Many people believe that uh, once uh, a teen becomes pregnant, that she's automatically emancipated, and that's not true. Emancipation is a legal term, and so once a teen becomes pregnant, although she may request uh, to be emancipated, she has to go through the legal system. She must go to the court and by court order be emancipated. And in order to be emancipated as a teen, whether or not you're pregnant or not pregnant, you have to prove that you're able to live by yourself and don't need the, the assistance of, of anyone else and can provide for yourself both and an emotion excuse me as far as housing is concerned as far as having a job is concerned now emotionally that's a separate issue but you have to be able to provide a show that you can provide for yourself as if you were live by yourself and then no one else could help you so that's a difference uh, that's a distinction with emancipation now once you become pregnant once a teen becomes pregnant there is a certain amount of autonomy that's granted to the preg uh, to the pregnant teen uh, that is not an emancipation issue but autonomy and that is related to consent what that means is that when a teen becomes pregnant, she becomes responsible for her pregnancy. All issues related to consent fall on that teen, even though they are not uh, under the, they're not over the age of 18, although they're still considered to be a child. All questions and consents fall back to the to the to the child related to her pregnancy. And this is where it's often butting heads with uh, uh, soon-to-be grandparents because they think that because their child is still under the age of 18 that they get to say everything that goes on related to the pregnancy, and that's not the case. You have to, they have to uh, basically talk to the teen who happens to be pregnant, and the teen is the one that has the final say related to the pregnancy. So that's very important for you to understand that. Now, Many times teens become scared because they believe that their parents are going to kick them out of the house. And that does happen a lot of times. Pa teens get pregnant and they get, the parents get upset because it goes against their values, it goes against their religion, and they kick the, the child out of the house. Now, mind you, this is, an, this is a touchy situation because a parent is still responsible for a teen until the age of 18, even if the, par even if the child is pregnant responsible to take care of that child, even though the child has the responsibility and autonomy related to her pregnancy. It's a little tricky there, but to understand it, basically you can't abandon your child. Okay, you have to make arrangements for that child to be taken care of someone else if you don't want that child living in your home. If you don't do it the way that it's supposed to be done legally, you could be written up on charges of child abandonment, even arrested over something like that. So it's so important to understand what the law says and that you're taking care of your child even though your child happens to be pregnant and they're going to have a child themselves. So keep that in mind that you don't want to be accused of child abandonment. You don't want to have child protective services involved and with the potential risk of, of, of a, a, new, uh, a, a parent ending up getting arrested because they're not taking care of their pregnant child. Okay. The uh, another point that I wanted to stress is what happens after the baby is born, and this is where an interesting subject. During the time of a pregnancy, the patient has all the, the consent. Uh, get, must give consent related to the to their to their pregnancy. But anything outside of that related to the health of the of the of that child still can fall back on the parents. Okay, so it's a little bit of a, a slippery soap there, but, uh, but you have to follow. So once the child delivers, that child as the parent of the newborn still has autonomy and must get permission, must give permission related to the newborn. But now that the child is no longer pregnant, anything to do medical, the doctors and everyone else must get permission from that child's parents 
for any care for that particular child. I hope you followed. So during the time of a pregnancy, the child must give permission related to her pregnancy and for the newborn. After the child is, uh, is delivered, has delivered her baby, she still has full autonomy related to the newborn. However, she no longer has autonomy related to herself. That falls back to her parents. So the parents now uh, give, must give permission to the, to, the, to the child that's no longer pregnant, but the child that's no longer pregnant still must give permission related to the care of her newborn. I hope that that clarifies that point. Uh, now, if, if a child does get kicked out of a house or a home and, th and the, the parents must provide some type of uh, support for that child, unless that child is, well, is, is able to be taken care of by somebody else on an agreement. So if a child gets kicked out of the home and the child moves in with, a, with an aunt, to grandparents, with friends, family, or with the parents of the, of the expecting daddy, that family member, though, that group of, of people, should discuss this with the parents of that child and get permission in writing, it would be recommended, so that everybody's in agreement, because if not, the, the person that takes that child in may be accused of kidnapping. Interesting su subject, but it, it does happen sometimes. So, the next point is birth control. If a child uh, is... In the state of Texas, a child can get birth control without the permission of, of her parents if she goes to a Title uh, 10 clinic. Now, if the child has Medicaid, she can go to any doctor that accepts Medicaid and get birth control without the permission of her parents. So interesting uh, point there as well. For birth control, a minor does not need the permission of her parents if she goes to a Title 10 clinic or if she has Medicaid, that she can go to any doctor and get birth control without the permission of her parents. And the last point has to do with pregnancy and the risks of uh, delivery for a teen. Now, I run a teen clinic, uh, so I, I'm, a, a significant percentage of my practice has to do with the high risk of teen pregnancies. What's important to understand is because teens are in a high risk group, they're more likely to, to end up with a cesarean section. One out of three uh, teens ends up with a C-section, which is completely unnecessary. And the reason for that is that unfortunately, uh, many doctors, especially those that are on teen panels, uh, do not have any policing of, of their C-section rates. And so teens end up with C-sections because they're potentially more complicated and it's unnecessary. But in order to, to protect your child, it's a good idea, a good idea to get uh, that in writing that what is the doctor's C-section rate and get it in writing. And if they're not able to provide it for you, maybe you should shop around. Like for example, I say my C-section rate is approximately 5% with my teens and we provide that information in writing. And I think it's important to do that because my C-section rate being one in 20 for teens as compared to one in three for a lot of other practices, if you care about your child, you don't really want them to go to a doctor who has a very high C-section rate when the C-section is unnecessary in, in a, a significant number of cases. And unfortunately, the teen centers don't police their doctors. They don't have any of that documented. So you as a parent or you as a, a soon-to-be grandparent should discuss that with your child and the, the, the pregnant teen and the uh, parents of that teen should uh, should basically ask that as one of the first questions when you go to see an OBGYN. What is your C-section rate and can I have it in writing? I hope this has answered a lot of questions. If you have any questions, feel free to make an appointment with us either through uh, coming on in to the, for an appointment or we can do telemedicine or even phone call appointments. And our number is 915-595-9944. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.